whether in their finances, their spirituality, or personal growth. And so with that, I'm going to get into the topic today, which is beauty for ashes. And so how many of you here, because I've got some people here too, how many of you here have actually gone through uh, the loss of someone that was very close to you? Mother, father, sister, brother, uh, someone, grandmother, someone that was close. And how did you feel about that when you were going through it? What kind of emotions did you feel? Uh, did it make you want to shut down? Uh, did it make you want to not be around people? Uh, did it want you to dismiss anything anybody said about the topic and not talk about it? Did it make you not want to go to their homegoing service? Um, did it make you angry at God? Mm, that's a good one. Did it make you angry at God or did it make you bitter? Did it make you bitter? Because one of the things that I found in going through um, the loss of my husband is, and I shouldn't say the loss because I know exactly where he is, okay? <laughs> I don't like to say loss, but you know, it's a terminology that people understand and that's why I use it in that way. I always say, he's not in my past. He is in my future, okay? He's in my future, all right? But he has transitioned. He has transitioned into the glory, okay? Um, and together, what we did for God was awesome. It was tremendous. We traveled to different parts of the world in this nation, and God used us to release the glory. <laughs> well, he's now been transported into the glory. <laughs> he's been trans, trans, uh, transferred, I, I'll say, or... Um, was the word I just got through using, um, uh, transported, or he's, he's literally moved over to the other side, okay? Transition. transition, thank you. He's transitioned into the glory. He has transitioned into the glory. He got his promotion already. He got there ahead of us, okay? And was I happy about it? Absolutely not. <laughs> Okay, I waited a long time for that man to come into my life. And when he came into my life, okay, when he came into my life, and um, when he came into my life and, you know, we were, I mean, truly in love with each other. We were, we had a marriage of heaven on the earth, okay? We had a marriage of heaven on the earth. And so when he transitioned into glory, I was not happy about it. Thank you so much. I was not happy about it at all. And so I released my faith and I said, perhaps God will give me a miracle. Okay. And I tell you, that's a whole nother story. And I'll have to really talk about that in the widows group that I have on Facebook. But, um, stand by for that one, you know, because I'll share that, you know, with the group. But this is something um, that people experience in life. And as long as you're on the planet, okay, as long as you're on the planet, you've probably heard this saying before, God bless you, welcome. Uh, and the saying is this, welcome, welcome, Desiree. Uh, the saying is this, that you're not going to be able to avoid some things while you're here on the planet. And one of them is death, uh, because everybody is going to deal with it at one stage or another in their lives. And oftentimes you may come from a family where you don't experience it for a long time, okay? And that's a good thing, okay? That's a really good thing, okay? Um, I come from a family of six, and um, I have... Uh, three brothers that have transitioned already. One of them was only three years older than me. So I say it wasn't time for him. You know, um, the Bible says that the number of man's days are 120. Okay. In the book of Genesis originally. Okay. That was God's plan. Um, the number of man's days would be even longer than that. But it says the number of man's days in Genesis is 120. Okay, if you read, in fact, in the book of Genesis, you'll find that people live a whole lot longer than that. They live to be like 900 plus years old in the 
book of Genesis if you'll read and, and you'll find that out. Um, but the point that I'm making is that um, even in the book of Psalms, you know, because a lot of times, and I'm going somewhere with this, uh, in the book of Psalms, it even talks about the number of man's days in Psalm 90 uh, being uh, three score and ten, okay? Three score and ten, or sixty plus ten, which is seventy. And that is not for the body of Christ at large. What that was talking about was the rebellious Jews at that time, okay? And so they went around and around in the wilderness. They were dealing with many different issues. And so that was not for everybody. You go back to the original mention back in the book of Genesis, 120 is the number of man's days, all right? And so a lot of times people say, well, you know, they died and it was just their time to go. I'm not convinced that a child who's four years old, you know, and they died prematurely because they got hit by a car or this or that, that it was their time to go. I believe they had a purpose and a destiny here in the earth. And I believe that what happened was the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes, he's a destroyer of life. Uh, Jesus comes that we might have life. He said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Uh, welcome Jackson family into the house. And so um, that's what Jesus says in the book of John chapter 10. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So he wants us to live a life and to live a full life. He wants us to live a life of purpose. He has a divine purpose for you to be on the planet. Okay. But I think it's very interesting, you know, the thoughts. Because wherever your mind is, whatever your mind is thinking on, that's where you go. So whatever's surrounding you in terms of the beliefs and the thoughts of others, it's uh, easy for people to incorporate that into their lives without even taking consideration of why they're doing it. And so it's important for you to um, actually be connected and understand and not just, well, you know, maybe this or maybe that, but for you to be uh, fully persuaded in what you believe, okay? I'm fully persuaded in what I believe. I am fully, fully persuaded, okay? And um, have had some experiences myself and have uh, been very close to others who've had experiences and can draw from a lot of these experiences uh, to come to uh, some of my own conclusions, but more importantly, um, I base my belief on this right here, this Word of God, okay? The Word of the living God that lives and abides forever. And so the Word speaks for itself. And um, with that, um, it gives us solutions and it gives us peace. It gives us peace in the passing of a loved one. It gives us peace in the passing of a loved one. I'll say that again, um, because it can be a very um, um, tumultuous time uh, for people to go through. And as tumultuous as it can be, trust me, okay, um, you want to have some stability, some peace in the midst of the storm. And what I have found to be the case is that there is a peace that passes all understanding that can come into your life and that can comfort you in a way that nothing and no one else can. And that peace I have found to be a peace that comes from Jesus and Jesus alone. And so I'll uh, start off by saying that, okay, he is known and he is the prince of peace okay because what will happen when someone passes away is that people initially come and they gather around you and they support you in terms of their presence they support you by just being there and that's a wonderful thing but after everybody's gone you know after those days those initial days of um, mourning and after everyone is gone it's you and Jesus it's you and you by yourself okay you're alone but if you're in him you're not alone because he said we have this promise that he said I will never leave you I will never leave you and I will never forsake you and there is a peace that passes all understanding a peace that you don't even understand when you're walking through it there were things that uh, I walked through and it's only after I walked through them that I realized 
what he had walked me through. And so he will walk with you. He will walk with you. And some of you out there know exactly what I'm talking about because he got you through some things and you're looking back now and you're like, I don't even know how I came through it. I don't even know what just happened, but I just know, I know my name. I know my name, <laughs> okay? I know my name, okay? I'm telling you because some of these things can be pretty devastating, okay? Um, they can be, uh, first of all, a shock to the system. I'll say that again, a shock to the system. They can literally be a shock to your system, okay? I don't think you heard me yet, <laughs> okay? Have you ever been in a car accident? Because that is one of the ways that I would be able to describe it. Um, when a person goes through a car accident, they're in shock oftentimes. If it's a serious accident, many times they're in shock. And as a result of that shock, they're unaware of the injuries that they have sustained. They're unaware. They're unaware of the injuries that they've sustained. Come on. And as a result of that, they can come out of that accident and years down the road be affected by injuries, internal injuries, other kinds of injuries. Oh, this is, this is a powerful thing. Uh, and I'm, I'm trying not to get too far ahead of myself, okay? But I'm in the midst of writing a book and I'm talking about soft tissue injuries, okay? Because there are injuries that can impact your life and they can impact your life in various ways, okay? And so let me just say, in, in just trying to make it as, as simplistic as I can, that there are sometimes things that happen to you and you don't realize how you've been impacted. Emotionally, physically, spiritually, and otherwise, okay? And then there's something also, when we talk about sorrow, there's something that is known as um, sorrow. You know, when you hear that word sorrow, what do you think? You think of somebody who's, you know, so, what? Sadness. sadness, thank you. You think of sadness, and sadness is a good word, excellent word for it, because that is a part <coughs> of it, okay? But do you know also there is something called bitter sorrow? Bitter sorrow. And when you have bitter sorrow, bitter sorrow can be described like this. If, you, um, if you're familiar with the Bible, there's a woman named Hannah who desired to have a, a child. And she was barren. She could not have a child. Interesting thing, if you study all the barren women in the Bible, because every single one of them, their births were significant. In other words, they were carrying something that was weighty before it ever got birthed in the earth. They were carrying something that was very weighty. So think about your dreams. Think about the things that you're carrying and the potential and the power of the impact of those dreams being realized in the earth. Now can you understand a little bit of what you're fighting? Because it's never about us. It's about the potential of what you're carrying, how it will impact a multitude of people. Even the things that we go through in life, yes, we go through them, but it's never just for us because when you come out of it, then you now have a testimony. You have now uh, an ability to tell or to share with someone else what you went through, what he walked you through, and how he brought you out. Think of the story of the Hebrew boys, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, how they were cast into the fiery furnace. They had a story to tell everybody when they came out of the what? The furnace. If the furnace never would have taken place in their lives, they never would have been able to have the testimony of the fourth man showing up. As a result of going through that fire, when they came out, not only were there laws that were changed, not only uh, was the entire culture impacted and affected, uh, but as a result of what they went through, they also received and saw promotion in their lives. A lot of times people want to get a promotion and they, <laughs> you, you, you want to you wanna go from zero to a hundred? You want to go from zero to a hundred? You go through the furnace of affliction like they did. <laughs> if you want to go from zero to 100, that's how you do it. Now, 
Not too many people want to sign up for that. (laughs) But because of what was in the 